After the premiere last week and its shocking ending where Sarah was killed, the grim and bleak outlook in Starling City has swiftly returned. The episode started off in the way that you knew it would, emotionally. As the team arrive back at base to find Laurel and Sarah's body awaiting them, Laurel tells Oliver that she intends to help catch the guy who did this. Welcome to the top five moments of the episode, followed by the overall verdict. After cross-checking Argus's database, Diggle comes up with a name, Komodo. Oliver tracks him down with the help of Felicity, hoping to get some answers. Got away. This week's flashbacks brought us a welcome return to one Tommy Merlin, who was looking into the email logon of Oliver in Hong Kong. Waller tried to get Oliver to assassinate him while he was unaware that it was Tommy, but Waller's motivations are still vastly unclear. Oliver only had one way to save Tommy, and to stop him looking for his best friend. Oliver Queen is dead. He's riding at the bottom of the ocean. And you will too. If your father doesn't pay that ransom. Well, you knew that was when the scene closed out. We haven't seen a single second of Thea or Malcolm since season two's end. Until now. And hopefully we will have plenty more to see of them in the future. Well done. Thanks, Dad. Lower your bow and live. We both know that's not gonna happen. Oliver defeats Komodo as Laurel stares on, desperate to pull the trigger. Komodo explains that he's proud of his work, and says he did not kill Sarah, and wouldn't lie, even if he did. It pulls up the question again of who really did kill Sarah. You're lying. I'm proud of my work. I wouldn't deny it. Even with a gun in your face? Well, look, you need to stop and listen to him. No. She deserves a proper burial. She's earned it. Oh, it's not fair. <laughs> the moment that takes my top spot this week, and could have done on just sentimental value alone, was Sarah's burial. But it was much more than that. At the end of the episode, we said goodbye to Sarah, and to the canary as we knew her. Oliver, it's not fair. It's not fair. My overall verdict for this week's episode of Arrow is an 8 out of 10. As things looked up in Starling at the beginning of last week, we had a shot of reality. Or more so, an Arrow. This episode concentrated solely on finding the archer who brutally murdered Sarah last week. Komodo provided an above average opponent for Oliver who was mainly used to help push along the plot of Laurel who wanted revenge for her sister's death. She questioned rather physically a witness to get some information out of him, and she tried to pull the trigger before she found out that Komodo was innocent. She did make a strong choice in deciding not to tell her father about Sarah's death. She decided to bear the weight of what happened in the family alone, and she will only grow stronger for that. Hey, I'm your dad. I forgive you. I always forgive you. 
She's got a long way to go before being the fully-fledged Black Canary, but you can't doubt that that's where our arc is heading now. It's inevitable at this stage. Some of the hints in this episode were a little too in your face, like with the jacket holding scene, but she's nowhere near the warrior that Sarah was. She will have to do a lot of training to get that far. I must say I've really enjoyed the flashbacks so far this season. We haven't seen much of Amanda Waller for now, and I think that's intentional to mask her real intentions. But the sudden appearance and return of Tommy was done very well. It was very in your face, Oliver capturing Tommy and telling him that Oliver was dead and rotting at the bottom of the ocean was a powerful scene to push Tommy away and to save his life. So let's look at the facts. Sarah obviously knew the shooter that killed her as she uttered the words, what are you doing here, before her inevitable demise. We found out this episode that Komodo was not the shooter, so the list is getting shorter and shorter by the minute. Who has motive? I said I wouldn't be surprised if it was Raz, and his motive, I guess, could be that she's left the league before and now she's beginning to sort of take the piss in regards to the restrictions of the league. She certainly was pushing those boundaries anyway, so I wouldn't be surprised. Who do you think killed Sarah and why? Let me know below. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you next week. I don't want to die down here. So don't know. Then was it made to live?